Have you ever wondered just how much training and racing in the cold impacts your performance? Well, today we're here with the research. In this video, you'll learn, one, how running in the cold impacts muscle power, lactate production, and even carbohydrate usage. Two, how the body instinctively adapts to running in the cold and what it means for your performance. And three, the ways you can mitigate these factors to perform better during your workouts and races this winter. My name is Andy Cazzarelli, and I'm one of the coaches here at Runners Connect. Our goal is to help you train smarter and stay healthy with researched backed information and training plans. Personally, I'm a 238 marathoner and former 10K All-American at NC State. Let's get into the video. The research on running in the cold. First, we'll take a look at the scientific literature to see what happens to your body when it exercises in the cold. As is often the case with environmental factors, the military has taken a keen interest in the physiology of exercise in the cold. This was the topic of a 1991 review from the Naval Medical Research Institute. In this article, doubt lists a number of changes that affect the body during exercise in low temperatures. One, you rely on carbohydrates more and less on fats for energy. Two, your lactate production is higher for a given intensity, indicating that you're going deeper into oxygen debt to produce the necessary energy to maintain a given pace, as evidenced by higher oxygen consumption rate in colder temperatures. Three, your muscle contractions are less powerful, which demands an increase in fast twitch muscle fiber usage, perhaps explaining the higher lactate production. All these adaptions have consequences for running, relying more on carbohydrates will drain your energy reserves faster on long runs and could spell trouble in the winter marathon. Higher lactate production and less efficient muscle contractions are also problematic for shorter races. Fortunately, Doubt points out that these effects can be mitigated with warm clothing and moderate activity, like jogging to maintain your body temperature. However, short to medium bout length bouts of high intensity don't seem to be as effective at boosting body or muscle temperatures. This means it's best to use a continuous workout rather than short bouts of exercise, as once you cool down, you will struggle to warm back up during a race or a workout. Reviewing more recent literature in a 2006 article, Lawrence Armstrong, not Lance, don't worry, at the University of Connecticut speculated that some of the performance drops associated with cold weather may be the result of having a higher baseline metabolic rate, which is one of the body's mechanisms to maintaining core temperature. Shivering is a good example of this, though your metabolic rate is higher in the cold even when you're not shivering. Armstrong suggests this could steal energy that would otherwise be used for athletic performance. Armstrong also cited several studies which demonstrate that dehydration is a risk in cold weather as low temperatures increase urine output and diminish thirst. Water losses from breathing and sweating remain significant even in cold temperatures, so staying hydrated should be a priority. Now, how does your body adapt to running in the cold? A 2004 literature review looked at how the body's adaptions to cold vary based on the temperature outside. What they found is that your body burns more carbohydrates, less fat, and has higher oxygen consumption at a given exercise intensity in cooler temperatures. Explosive power is also limited by the temperature of the muscles, which the researchers point out can be significantly different to the body's core temperature. Nimmo found that these physiological changes become more drastic as your core temperature drops. This means from a performance standpoint, it is critically important to keep your body warm at all times when exercising in the cold. She also noted that even though many of the military athletic studies are done on athletes, some endurance runners are especially vulnerable to performance deficits from cold temperatures due to their slim build. Environments that are cold and wet are also problematic as they dramatically increase heat loss and render many fabrics ineffective. According to the researchers, the ideal temperature for endurance exercise is somewhere around 52 degrees Fahrenheit or 11 degrees Celsius. So it's clear from all these studies that running in the cold can negatively impact performance. Thankfully, our look into the research also revealed some helpful tips. It's important to stay warm before and during a workout or race in the cold. As Doubt points out, it's much harder to bring back up once it has dropped. Warming up before a race or workout becomes even more critical in the cold. Make sure you do a really good warm up before any races or hard workouts. The more you're able to raise your core body temperature, the better you'll be able to perform. Maintaining your carbohydrate and fluid intake levels are also important as you're more likely to hit the wall in training or on a long race during cold weather. Dehydration is a big risk too. 
Many runners make the mistake of thinking they don't need to drink as much, but you may even sweat more in the winter than the summer since the clothes will, be, will wick the sweat away. Layering is always a good idea in the cold. It is easier to calibrate your optimal clothing level when you have several thinner layers versus one thick one. If you're going to train or race in cold weather frequently, it's probably worth investing in some technical cold weather clothing, especially if you encounter cold and wet conditions frequently. I'll leave a link in the description to our guide on winter weather clothing and what to wear for any given temperature. Bitterly cold days are often not as bad as 33 and raining. Rain can make otherwise warm clothes useless. If you can find yourself running in cold rain often, buy latex gloves. Latex is waterproof. You can wear the latex gloves under or over your mittens. This will keep your hands dry. Once they get wet, your fingers are going to hurt. Wear tight clothing. Loose clothes will sag more and weigh you down. Not only will tight clothes feel more comfortable, but they are closer to your skin. They can create a layer of warmth similar to that of a wetsuit. Put Vaseline on exposed parts of your skin. Vaseline is water resistant and it will help keep your body warm if it's windy. Put newspaper in your shoes immediately after your run. The newspaper will soak up the water and help your shoes maintain their structure. Do not put your shoes in the dryer or the oven. It will shrink the material and lessen their shelf life. It is better to start out a race or workout with too many layers than not enough. You can always take something off during the race. Many larger races donate clothes found along the course to charity. Take a trip to your local thrift store and buy a few $2 sweatshirts you can wear and throw away mid-race without concern. Finally, it will probably pay off to be realistic. Just like you can't expect to run at your best when it's 95 out, the same goes for a 15 degree turkey trot. While you may not hit your PR, you can still get a competitive edge on other runners who aren't prepared for the effects of cold temperatures.